How strong should you be? Ever wonder if you're actually strong or at least compared to people like yourself? Today's episode, we're going to talk about that and we're going to help you determine how strong you should be and also talk about the steps to getting strong as fast as possible. In fact, we're going to talk about the fastest way to get bigger and stronger all at the same time. Just I know you say Adam up at night. I yes, it does actually, and I know that you wrote a really complex episode here. But I think Justin's metric has been the one I've been trying to live by for the last five years. Mm. As long as I can beat up all the other dads in my class, <laughs> yeah, I'm right. I'm strong enough. I, st <laughs> I stand by that, dude. I just that's my goal. I saw a meme. I size up all the dads in kindergarten <laughs> class. And I, I, say, I, like all right, I'm good. I'm good still. You're okay. <laughs> I'm you barely have to work out for that. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a meme the other day where it said, uh, "I just started a lawnmower with one." pull on a rival dad's lawnmower in front of his kid. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate yeah, flex, right? Dude. Walk over and start like, someone else's yeah. lawnmower, one pull. I like that. All right, so, that. so let's yeah. talk about, we're going to get to uh, strength metrics. Um, we actually um, went on the internet and, you know, and we're going to discuss if we agree or not, but we found some numbers or percentages that would put you within a particular ranking. Like if you're, you're if you're good, optimal, advanced, or an athlete, um, and so we'll talk about that. Um, and then we're going to talk about what makes you strong, like how you can get strong as fast uh, as possible. But I think it's important to consider all of the variables that contribute to your strength. Right? Sure. So everybody's different. I mean, this is what this is really important. Yeah. Everybody's different. Uh, genetics make a big difference here. They definitely matter. Some people are just going to be a lot stronger than you naturally or have a, a much larger potential for strength. And coming from someone who's worked in the fitness space, I have seen the widest range yeah. of genetics with this to the point where I've seen people who are so strong, it's comical to other side where it's like, you know, we, if we don't get stronger, this is gonna this is gonna put your life at risk. I also think it's important to note. Uh, okay, so I thought you did a really good job of of breaking down the categories mm -hmm. in in a good range, but it's also important to understand that. Typically, what will uh, the things that will give you an advantage and make you strong in one category may hinder you in another one. So, for example, uh, I'm a tall, lanky guy. So, a, a pull up or pull ups, uh, uh, deadlifts, um, I work in my favor. So, yeah. I, I so you knowing that, for that, yeah. So, it, so I don't beat myself up over squatting. Like squatting is right. much more difficult. I have a long way to travel. I have long femurs. Long. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. it's going to be. I'm not going to be as good of a squatter as I am a deadlifter. So there, there are some of the, the little bit of a variance there too. Yeah, is and, that and at the end of the day, like an age matters too. But at the end of the day, uh, the, the here's what's important: Are you improving? Yes. It's you versus you, yeah, as they say. That's it. Like if you're if you're training, you're exercising, you're consistent, and you're stronger today than you were six months ago, like, that's positive movement. You're moving in the right direction. And if you have the right attitude towards uh, exercise, this is something you're going to do for the rest of your life. And, and if you're continuing to progress, like you are kicking butt, period, end of story. So whenever we have somebody, in fact, call in and ask us questions, and uh, inevitably it's like, how much muscle can I build and how am I doing? And it's like, you know, we ask them like, how, what were you lifting before? What are you lifting now? And there's an improvement. It's an improvement. Mm -hmm. You're doing the right thing. So don't get too caught up with this kind of stuff, but uh, I get it, you know? Yeah. I, this is stuff that used to interest me yeah. as well. So no, I just want to know where you stack up against, uh, you know, what the standards are, I guess. Yeah. And it, it's it's kind of a nice way to have sort of a, a guideline to yes. just kind of compare. Now, we used, now, look, you could be really strong in a lot of different exercises in different ways. So we picked the exercises that probably uh, you know, communicate overall strength the best. And I say probably because if you play a particular sport or you want a specific type of strength, then some of what we're about to say might not matter at all. Um, but generally speaking, these exercises in combination kind of paint a, a relatively overall picture uh, of strength. Oh, well, not only that, but I mean, we these exercises are the exercises that we encourage all of our listeners to get good at and get strong at because they're the biggest bang for your buck in, in all, all, all pursuits. They tend to be the best. Yeah. Whether you're trying to get uh, strong, leaner, uh, more definition, look better. I mean, better this physique, is, yeah. yeah, these these movements, I mean, the movements that we're talking about, if you did only these movements and just got strong yeah. stronger in those, you're going to see a significant improvement in all aspects, all pursuits. Right, right. Yeah. So let me tell you the exercises first, right? So we picked the squat. This is a very foundational uh, human movement. Bilateral, it's two legs. You're squatting down, squatting up. It's a really good measure of lower body strength, but also 
of back strength and overall stability. Then you have a horizontal press. This is a bench press. Um, so this really highlights how strong you are pushing things away from your body. Then there's a deadlift. This is lifting something off the ground. This is highlighting strength in your hips, the posterior chain, your back. This also highlights your grip strength. We have a vertical press and overhead press. So this is stability in your, in your entire body. Of course, your arm and shoulder strength. And then we included a body weight exercise. And the reason why I did this is whenever we list the big four, inevitably there's someone that's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm smaller, you know, and, and you know, I'm, not, I'm lighter. Like, like, what about me? It's like, well, body weight exercise will be easier for you. And on the flip side, you're a big, heavy person. You may lift a lot of weight with this kind of stuff, but then you find body weight exercises yeah. to be quite kind difficult. Of an equalizer. And lifting and moving your body weight is very functional. Like if you're really strong at moving your body through space, that translates to the real world and to sports incredibly, incredibly well. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the 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 straight the strength standards for the squat, and we've divided them into male and female. Okay, so because they're different for male and female, and the categories are decent, good, optimal, advanced, and then athlete. Okay, so decent. And now here's this is what I like about this list is we didn't just give you like this percentage of your body weight. We also gave you a number. In other words, if you're a big heavy person percentage of your body weight starts to get way more difficult, right? You're a 270-pound man. Squatting, you know, two times your body weight becomes a lot more impossible. So there's a number and or uh, a percentage uh, of your body weight. Yeah. So decent for a man is 185-pound squat or one time your body weight. Good, 225 or 1.2 times your body weight. Optimal is 255 or one and a half times your body weight. Advanced is 315 or 1.75 times your body weight, and an athlete is over 365 mm. or two times your body weight. How, by the way, your best lifts, you guys all went athlete, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. I think I know your best yeah. squat. Yeah, but it's, it wasn't, it's not, if I went by 365 or above, technically it wasn't two times my body weight because mm. at that time I was 225. Mm. So What's that'd be, so that'd you be went 405. Yeah, I was at 425. Oh, okay. So close. Close to it, but not not and not exactly. So I would fall in the advanced athlete for my squat. Yeah, yeah deadlift. Yeah. Yes, though, when we get yeah. to that. Justin, but. you I'm for sure. Yeah, you squat. That. Yeah, yeah. I got up to 500 at some point at the 230. So is that two times your body weight? Is that more? At 500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should hope so. Point two five. Point two five. All right, all right. <laughs> That's good. Got that. You didn't catch that. I know. I was like, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's like, that was such an insult and so off. He's now, like, as it, let me ask you guys this. So let's go through the female first, and we'll I got a question this later. And then I got a question. You're really for mad. <laughs> female squat standards: decent, 95 pounds or 0.8 times your body weight. Good is 135 or one time your body weight. Optimal 185 or 1.3 times your body weight. Advanced 215 or one and a half times your body weight. Athlete is 235 or more. Uh, or 1.75 times your body weight. Okay, looking at these numbers, you guys, and, and when we train clients, now all of us fitness fanatics, uh, Justin was a was a college athlete. I was fanatical beyond whatever. Adam was a pro physique competitor. So I would expect us to be in the kind of advanced, you know, athlete level. I've known people, by the way, to crush these numbers. But what about our clients? How do you agree with these numbers? I do. These are, I think you did a they're really- They're pretty accurate, right? They're, they're pretty really accurate. I'd, solid. I'd, I'd say most of my female clients that train with me for a, a good period of time, meaning six months or more that yeah. had been with me, I could at least get all of their squats up to 185. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that that yeah. was pretty standard. It was definitely unique to get my female clients above two hundred. Yeah. So a handful it was a of the, special. Yeah. Oh yeah. Client. If I if I had a client, if I had a, a girl that was squatting 200, 205, 225, like she was unique, she was special. That was that's a that's incredibly impressive. But one eighty five was pretty. And I would get them below that. Like a lot of times, they would start off barely being able to squat 100. Or the I could, bar. Yeah, I yeah. Could, and I could get them all the way up to one eighty five. I could get pretty almost, confidently almost any healthy woman. Uh, uh, up to about 115 to 135 pounds, almost any healthy woman. Once they were getting older, then 95 pounds would be kind of where we're at. But, you know, looking at these numbers, I would say it's pretty realistic for the average person to either be good or optimal, male or female. I'd say it's pretty realistic for most people. Once you yeah. get to the higher levels, now you're probably throwing in some genetics and fanaticism and, and, and the like. Look and I think, I think generally speaking, that's a pretty good goal for most people. It's, it's a like, great goal. It's like, yeah, you should be shooting for that good to optimal range. Yeah. 
Um, if you're a healthy, you know, 40 year old man and you can squat 255, or you're doing pretty good. Or, or if you're a female, 185, you're doing great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're doing really good. Yeah. Hey, this episode is brought to you by Seed. This is the world's best probiotic, hands down. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below or scan the QR code. All right. So next is bench press. Um, Doug, if you could scroll down so we can look at that. So with bench press, we have for men, Decent is 135 or 0.75 times your body weight. Good, 185 or one times your body weight. Optimal, 235 or 1.3 times your body weight. Advanced is 275 or one and a half times your body weight. Athlete, 315 or 1.75 your body weight. You guys, you guys all hit athlete. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. So did I. Those are uh, the better ones. Yeah. Now, um, for, let's go through women, and then we'll talk about how realistic these are again. For women, decent is 80 pounds or 0.865, your body weight. Scroll. There we go. Good is 95 pounds or 0.7 times your body weight. Optimal is 115 pounds or 0.85 times your body weight. Advanced 135 or one time your body weight. And an athlete, uh, 165 or 1.25 times your body weight. This is a pretty good pretty good numbers, I would say. It Although. Is, yeah. More rare for women to hit some of these For numbers. sure. I was just going to yeah. say that. I was going to say this one, it would probably be the most challenging as far as, uh, you know, like I said, I think I could get most of my female clients, the numbers that we have for deadlifting and squatting, which, it, okay, this is true though, right? Like uh, when it comes to muscle development in the lower body, uh, men and women are, as far as their ability to build muscle. I mean, men are stronger, but the difference is nearly as high as upper body. Yeah, yeah, it's, yes. yeah there's a huge discrepancy yes. in our upper body. Our lower body, we're r- relatively the same as far as what, what we what we have potential for, not necessarily yes. like as the, 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 a woman should yeah, be able the to lift the same. The athlete number for man, 315, I had, as in terms of clients, I don't think I ever had a client hit 315. I had a client hit 275, but that was it. For men? Yes. This, my strong, strong men were able to do 225. Yeah. Uh, for a single, w- women, I I had one woman once be able to do 135, and that was it. Most of the women I trained who were strong, like 115, was the number I would hit. Yeah, 45 on each side. That was a big, huge. That was a huge milestone. Deal. That was kind milestone. of a goal for most of my clients that wanted to get strong. Was if if my girls could put the wheels on, right? Yeah, that was yeah. a big deal. Like that's a good goal to get yeah, there. Yeah. So yeah. all right, that's, that's deadlifts. Tough. Let's talk about the deadlift. So decent for a man. 185 pounds or one time their body weight. Good, 245 or 1.3 times your body weight. Optimal, 300 pounds or 1.65 times your body weight. Advanced, 350 pounds or two times your body weight. Athlete, 405 uh, pounds or 2.25 times uh, their body weight. I think all of us hit. <laughs> it was barely made that one. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> yeah. We all hit that yeah. one. That was not my best that lift. Would, that for sure is my best lift. My, my was well, you're like me in the flip of this, Justin, where I I fall under the athlete category if I go by the weight, but if I go two and a quarter times in the in the squats, I wouldn't have made the yeah, squat yeah, number, yeah. but I make the, the just the total number, and I think that's what you are here I've, too, yeah. right? Yeah, I've done three times my body weight in a deadlift. That was the most I ever did times body weight, and then total pounds 605 but that's the one lift i can do that that's you know that's mine yeah it's your bread and butter that's for it. sure female deadlift standards 135 uh or one-time body weight is decent good is 185 or 1.3 times body weight optimal 215 or 1.65 times body weight advanced mm-hmm. to 65 or two times body weight athlete 295 or 2.25 times look at the difference body. there with that, those standards for deadlift and squat yes it's pretty crazy so it makes inter- a lot of sense interesting too i actually i had uh more success getting female clients up to the the deadlift yes, really yes, high. yes so yes, I, yes. I had more advanced people so i had quite a few girls that i could get i've up had over. a few to 225 they yeah. took to mm-hmm. deadlift real quickly it seemed yeah, yeah. for sure 275 was the wise. biggest deadlift i had a female uh client deadlift. i never had a female client deadlift uh close to 300 pounds yeah mm-hmm. that's you know? impressive. next is the overhead press so decent for a man, 95 pounds or 0.5 times your body weight. Good is 135 or 0.65 times your body weight. Optimal, 165 or 0.85 times your body weight. Advanced, 185 or one times your body weight. Uh, and then athletes, 200 pounds or 1.25 times your body weight. I think we all hit that one. I don't know what the most I've ever overhead pressed before. That's a good question. I don't, I don't know if that's not, that's always been one that, 
You've never tested. I like shied that? away going like max weight, like mm. to see. Like I don't think I've ever. I did some heavy push presses with Justin before, where we the were push press. Yeah, uh, my numbers a little skewed on that because like that's kind of what I think of. But yeah, yeah darn, I was, strict I was pressed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, strict press. Oh uh, my bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's all. But that's also the only time I felt comfortable with like strict pressing really heavy weight like that. That's singles, hard, doubles, it's like hard, and I've always been like weary of doing that because I don't want to arch my back or end up injuring yeah, myself. So I've kind of stayed lot. away from uh, doing that. I wonder where, I, I know for sure I'm in the advance. I don't know if Stick, I've hit the athlete. press advance, but I think push press. That's why I was, I was all proud. Yeah, and then you yeah, said that, like, oh, never mind. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. No. Push press, I got some good numbers. On yeah, yeah, I know I've strictly done 185, though. I definitely have strictly 185. What do you, you have you hit 315 overhead? 315. Holy yeah, cow. Yeah, yeah, no push press. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. All right, female overhead press standards. Decent is 45 pounds. Or 0.35 times their body weight. Good is 65 or 0.5 times their body weight. Optimal, 95 pounds or 0.75 times their body weight. Advanced is 105 pounds or 0.8 times their body weight. Athlete is 120 pounds or 0.9 times their body weight. I think that's pretty good, pretty accurate. Yeah. But very rarely. I haven't seen much strength in this lift no. with my female clients. That's mm -hmm. a very rare one. Yeah, sure. I don't know if I've, I'm trying to think if I've peaked over 100 with cl a female client. I had over. one do one, I had a couple do 105, but they were but they were both early 30s and very consistent uh, mm -hmm. with their work. And they were strong. They were really, really strong. Never saw more than that for clients. I had some female trainers that could get 125. I don't think I ever saw a, a female press over one. I know they do. They can, but I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, you that's know, impressive. Bigger. All right, pull-ups. Now we're talking about body weight. So those of you that are, you know, smaller, you're like, all right, where's when do we get into the pull-ups? <laughs> hey, uh, what about us, you guys? <laughs> for a man, decent is three. Good is eight. Optimal is 12. Advanced is 15. Athlete is 20. Is, de is three considered decent even, huh? Decent. Decent. Average man can't do one. I is bet that if you true? Pull, I bet if you pull the average dude out no. for a guy that's really? in their 30s and 40s, like 40, they won't be able to do one. Uh, really? Uh, yeah. Like well, a full they lift. Are we? I didn't realize we've gotten that weak. Yeah. I mean, 20 year old dude probably. That's embarrassing. You know, but I, yeah, I know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that that would even be considered decent like that. That's interesting. Yeah. That I, you know, although I can't remember. I mean, the last it's time decent. I did. It's not average, right? So they're trying to say it's. But you're right. Three sounds like it's kind of. I low, mean, but. though, to your earlier point, like some some of my friends that lifted real heavy, like couldn't do a pull up because they're just huge guys. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, you hung out with a lot of linemen and shit. A lot of linemen. I worked <laughs> yeah, out with a lot funny. of those guys. Yes. This was an exercise that I sucked at, and then I just practiced, practiced, and I got really, really good where I could rep out 25 reps. But at one point, I remember like 10 was just crazy challenge for me. Female pull-up standards. One is decent. Three is good. Optimal is five. Advanced is eight. Athlete is 12. That's impressive. That's a girl that can get over 10 pull-ups is really, really, really oh, impressive. Yes. My, and also rare. Badass. When I first started dating Jessica, this is right out of Cirque du Soleil when she used to do the silks. Oh, she sure used she... to do, oh yeah, she'd do 10 pull-ups with her legs out in front of her holding on to the, the silks. Not even a bar back in those days, which was insane. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I couldn't do that. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have two programs that are ideal for those people who want to build maximal strength. MAPS Strong, MAPS Power Lift. You can get them together right now, 73% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below or scan the QR code. All right, back to the show. All right, so let's talk about, okay, so you're listening to this and you're like, all right, I want to see if I can get stronger as fast as possible. What are the what are the steps to doing so? Um, I think it's important for people to understand that although muscle size, how hard the muscles contract, play a role in strength for sure. Bigger muscles, you know, on the same person will lift more than the smaller muscles will, or if that muscle's smaller. But I, a lot of people don't realize that strength is a skill as yes. well. And one of the fastest ways to get stronger is to practice whatever that lift is or that exercise is you want to get good at Frequently. often. Yes. Practice it often, often, often. Like, in other words, if you want to get better at the bench press, and normally when you work out, you hit chest on Mondays and Thursdays, and you do a bunch of exercises, if you stop doing that part of your workout, if you stop doing chest on Mondays and Thursdays, and all you did was five days a week you bench pressed, mm -hmm. you did three sets of bench press, varying degrees of intensity. It's just load management. That's yeah, it. and intensity management, if you get that down perfect and you keep practicing it where you're not overwhelming yourself, you're able to recover You're fully, not hammering yourself. Man, you get strong. Yeah. Fast. Very I fast. mean, this applies to, to, to all exercises, yes. but this becomes a paramount to compound lifts. Mm. And meaning when you have multiple multiple joints involved in a movement, 
multiple joints also take multiple muscles to move that one joint. So you have a, a symphony of muscles yes. that all need to work together in order to perform a movement. That's why this becomes such a big deal to practice this. It's not as simple as like, oh, just uh, flex your elbow and, you know, you get your, you, I can curl and work my bicep. There's complexity. But yeah, there's a lot of complexity to all of these movements. And so much of the skill of getting better and stronger at them is the practicing there, part. There was a period there where there was this popular, and it was back in the, I think it was when bodybuilding.com was really popular on the internet and had all these forums. And there was this popular workout on these forums mm. and it was the squat, squat every day, the squat every mm -hmm. day program. Remember, remember that? that? Mm -hmm. And back then the, uh, the, you know, the, the most prevalent theory around exercise was kind of this bodybuilding approach, right? Hit your legs once a week or whatever. And this approach came out squat every day. Now what they did is they, they, they did a good job of managing the load. Some days were hard. Some days were easy. Some days were light, but faster. And so you're, you're managing the intensity. You can't go hard, Every single day, you got to kind of, but you're practicing the squat. And people were like, I added 50 pounds in my squat. Mm -hmm. I added 70 pounds in my squat. I added 30 pounds in my squat. And people were so blown away. Now, what happened was a lot of people took that too far. Yes. And they did everything all the time and then burnt themselves out. So this works really well when it's one lift. If you do all the lifts like this all the time, probably, I, probably going to be too I much. just did a, um, a little clip on the series that I'm shooting right now. And, uh, and I know you guys have experienced this too deadlifting for me is the, the place I see it the most. And I don't know if that has something to do with that's one of my stronger lifts or not, but I'll do a, a set of eight reps. And between each rep, I'm, I'm thinking about my technique of it. And there is a significant difference in when my technique is flawless versus just off of perfect. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it makes the weight feel half the oh, weight. Totally. It's like totally. that crazy of a difference of just, loading the hips, engaging them correctly, everything stiff like it's supposed to, and yeah. then it fires just it the clicks. right. And then all of a sudden that bar moves up like there's no weight on it. And then just me slightly being off, just so slightly that nobody else would even be able to tell. The average person look at me and be like, oh, that was perfect too. They have no idea. But you can feel it. But I can feel it. And all of a sudden the weight feels twice. As, I mean, that's how much of a difference the practicing the technique. That's part of it, right? Because if you if you were to take like a long stick and I were to hold one end of it and you put 10 pounds in the middle of it, it would feel very different than if you move 10 pounds, six inches out to the end, feel much heavier. This is what happens with your technique. If you're off a little bit, the efficiency of the, of the, of the muscle contraction. Yeah, yeah, you lose 5% of your mm -hmm. strength. You could even lose more than that. Performance leaks. All by being place. off those performance leaks. And then also you mentioned the symphony of the muscles working together. I like to think of, uh, just the example I like to think of, is the game of tug of war. Remember that when you when you when you, people would get on both sides and you pull, and and what you realize is the really the team that typically wins is the team that knows how to pull at the same time. Like they'll hold, yep. pull together, hold, pull together. Versus the other side where just everybody's trying to pull as hard as they can, and some are pulling hard, some are resting or whatever. It's that it's that working it's not together. Unison, yeah. Yes, and then the lastly, the central nervous system. The more you practice a movement the harder it fires, the better, if the more efficient it becomes. So the central nervous system, which communicates to the muscles, which tells them how hard to contract. And, and by the way, your central nervous system is never telling your muscles to contract to the full capacity. It's very rare. And the reason is the risk of injuries there. There's like 10%, 15, some people 30%. Well, that's the limiter. Left. That's always the limiter. It's, yes. And that's why you practice it more often. You're teaching your central nervous that's system right. that you have all the checks and balances in place. You're able to properly stabilize and protect around the joints. And so it recognizes that now it delivers more force. Yes. In fact, uh, this is where you heal the story of the person. Uh, you know, the mom will save their kid by lifting the car, something that was imper imperceptible. It's because under extreme duress, the central nervous system shuts off the safeguards and says, go for it if you hurt yourself or whatever. This is obviously a stressful situation. So in other words, practice often, your CNS learns how to fire harder and you just get stronger. Now, I love that you ordered these like this because obviously it starts with the sending the signal, practicing as often as possible. That in itself is will make a difference for people regardless, right? If, you've, if yeah. you don't practice it and you do start to practice it, you'll see improvement no matter what else you do. But the the very next most important thing, in my opinion, that you want to do if you are going to get strong or build as much muscle as possible is you got to hit those protein targets. That's right. You're sending a loud Feed signal it. by practicing these incredible lifts, but if you do not give it the building blocks to go to work and build, you're just not going to. Yes, yes. High protein uh, in, in terms of strength and muscle hypertrophy 
is so strongly connected to muscle growth. Uh, it's it's the it's one of the most consistent things that you see in diet. So diet studies are often challenging because uh, it's hard to control them. There tends to be conflicting messages: what's healthy, what's not healthy. This works for some people. This works for some. but high protein in every study that's done on strength up to a certain point, right? So you can, you can just eat, 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 and then it's past a certain point, not going to get any benefit, but it gets pretty high. Like eating a gram of protein per pound of body weight is right around the limit. That's a lot of protein. Like most people listening, watching to this do not eat their body weight in grams of protein day in and day out. They may do it here and there, but they almost inevitably don't do it on a consistent basis. But if you did, the data is clear. Like you will do nothing else. You just do that you'll get stronger. It makes that big uh, of a difference. Yeah, and it's in the consistency behind it too because I think the other part is people will do it here and there and then they'll have, so they'll do it four days out of the week and then three days out of the week, they're in a deficit or they're missing their protein yeah. intake. So it can't be one of those things where like, oh yeah, I'm pretty good about hitting my protein. It's gotta be something that you are absolutely, if we're trying to build as much muscle as possible, it's gotta be one of those staple things that like, I cannot miss that protein. Intake. And you said consistent, the body doesn't have really a good storage mechanism uh, for amino acids. In other words, uh, fat, your body has a great way of storing energy and body fat. Your body can store a decent amount of carbohydrates in the form of glycogen, but muscle is where you have your protein in your body and your body doesn't want to eat away itself. No. So, so you can go, you know, going without uh, hitting those protein targets for a couple days makes a difference. That's why it's so important to be consistent. Yeah. All right. Next is to eat in a calorie surplus, meaning you want to eat more than the more calories than you're burning. Uh, and now this is the reason for this is first off a higher calorie diet tends to contribute to a stronger central nervous system. One of the ways the body adapts to a lower calorie diet is by weakening most of its signaling. Okay. One of those is central nervous system. This is why one of the reasons why you'll be low energy yeah. when you're low calorie. So even if you're even just bumping your calories alone tends to make you a little bit stronger with nothing else changing, but this is imperative because you need to feed the strength gains and the muscle gains. You have to have extra calories to do so. Otherwise you'll kind of stay the same. Well, you, yeah. your body is in one or one or two things. Always. It is either anabolic or it is catabolic, always. It's never somewhere in the middle. It is always one or the other. And in order for it to be anabolic, we have to be in a surplus. We've got to be in it's a caloric surplus. Signal. Otherwise, it's catabolic, which means it's breaking down. And the last thing we wanted to do is break down, pair down, lose muscle. If your goal is to build muscle, get stronger, we want to be sending that anabolic signal as much as possible. A calorie surplus is the way we do that. That's it. And lastly, get eight hours of sleep every single night. There's a few reasons why this is important. One is it optimizes your hormones. If you if you sleep, great. Your hormones tend to organize them way, themselves in a way that is pro muscle, anti fat. It's 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 improving your performance and your strength. It's not so worried about storing calories. Poor sleep does the opposite. Poor sleep contributes to muscle loss, contributes to fat storage. But you also have the recovery aspect of it. The majority of the muscle repair and adaptation that happens, happens when you sleep. Some of it happens during the day too, don't get me wrong, but when you sleep, it's turbocharged. This is when things are really starting to build. And then lastly, your central nervous system. This is how, this is how powerful an effect sleep has on your central nervous system. Tonight, you wanna to test this out, have crappy sleep tonight. Go work out. See how strong you are. <laughs> one night. I know. Like you didn't lose muscle in one night. You didn't. But but here's what happened. Your central nervous system is weak. It's fried. It's fried yep. from one night uh, of yep. bad sleep. You find out how crucial it is uh, once you get to the gym. That's yep. for sure. And this is it has to be a consistent one as well. By the way, you want to, to add to this. That means you need to go to bed eight and a half hours before you want to wake up. So you give yourself some leeway to go to sleep. And then go to bed and wake up at the same time every day because if you get eight hours every night, but you go to bed late Friday, wake up late Saturday, so by the time you get to Monday, you have jet lag, and that also yeah. contributes to the you know that, that everything that is just going to be fighting against you, like your energy, your hormones imbalanced, um, and just your overall like what, what you can draw from in your performance is going to be really low. Well, that's I think right. that's why that's this is so important. Like, okay, sleep is always important. You're always going to hear that in the list of things that you should do. Uh, but when you are pushing the the boundaries, you are trying to gain muscle, gain strength. 
uh, it's different than like, oh, trying to maintain being healthy or maintain like it's yeah. you are you're you're pushing intensity levels, you're stretching your body's abilities and capacity. The the importance of recovery and sleep at that point becomes paramount. It's mm -hmm. always important, but it becomes paramount when you are trying to stretch your capacity, grow and build. If you're not sleeping, you could have the best workout program in the world. You could even hit your protein intake like you're supposed to. But if you're fried and you're not and you're not getting rest and recovery, the body will not yeah. recover and it will not build and it will not adapt. If that intensity goes up, you got to match that with your recovery. That's right. All right. So we have some questions, Doug, from listeners. Yeah, we do. The first one is how realistic is it that I can reach advanced levels of strength? You know, I would I'm going to create an avatar of a person that would have the potential to hit those advanced or athlete levels uh, of strength. I would say you're probably you're you're probably under the age of 45, so between the ages of let's say 25 and 45, no major injuries and you've been working out consistently for like three to five years at least, and you have a good diet, then I'd say a decent chunk of people can probably hit those advanced to athlete uh, levels. Um, otherwise, it can be more difficult. Like once you start to get through 50s, 60s, or if you have had major injuries, or you're like, I've been working out for six months, like then it becomes unrealistic. Oh, I would make the, I would make the argument. Advanced, I would make the argument everybody. Athlete is... You know, you're you're talking about what you're saying. You need to be healthy. You got to be in a certain range level. You've been lifting for a while, but I don't know. I feel like advanced. I don't. I mean, when we went through those categories, I feel like there was no there was no category in there that I haven't been able to train a client, which mm -hmm. I feel like I've trained all yeah. different types of people. It was like a peak uh, level of client. Yeah. In terms of like where you could get them, yeah. from what I saw in terms of like those. Yeah, standards. definitely. I had a lot of clients that were over fifty five. I guess that's true. Yeah. You you trained more. Yeah. You were definitely more advanced age, and so mm -hmm. maybe maybe that's a little unrealistic for somebody that's yeah. That's why know, I said that. Pretty old, mm -hmm. deconditioned. Mm -hmm. um, but like twenty five to forty five, I think. Yeah, oh yeah, most that. people you definitely hit that. Most people, the advanced is a good goal, no matter what. Like yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good goal to have, and it's realistic. Uh, expecting somebody in advanced age, chronic issues, stuff going on. Yeah, like, yeah. okay, yeah, about getting the advanced athlete, you're probably targeting more optimal, which would still be phenomenal. The next question is, I just want to build muscle. Is strength still important? It's super yeah. important. Yeah. <laughs> just the most important, that's yeah, all. They just yeah, they kind of go together. Nothing, like, like strength is, is very strongly connected and correlated uh, to muscle. It doesn't guarantee muscle gain. But if he keeps getting stronger, it guarantees yeah. muscle gain. Like you add fifty pounds to lifts, you've got more muscle. It's I, just the way it works. I, I do think. That, okay, this is kind of a, a, a bit of a good uh, or nuanced question because there there is a part like okay, so for a very long period of time, I didn't uh, care about strength. I really didn't care how much weight I was lifting on the bar. It really was not a focus of mine. In fact, I didn't try PR stuff until I was damn near thirty years old. Um, and I built a pretty good physique, so it's not like you can't. Uh, build a but i was getting stronger right yeah, so that's right, that's right. Yeah. so so I, you i guess you can have a goal of you don't you don't you're not you're not uh obsessed with getting a higher bench or higher max score. max strength yeah you're just like i'm i'm strong yeah i'm challenging myself through the program but i'm not i'm not this, focused just on the weight on the bar like there's a lot of ways for you to progressively overload besides just i adding. would say this becomes most important in the free, first three years of training like the first three years of training like strength is the most important thing to chase because it's going to give you everything yeah after that then you know once you get to it like you get really strong and, and whatnot then then you know you could change ways of progressive overloading with technique yeah. and feel and focus and ranges of motion and stuff like that. Because obviously you can't get strong forever. Yeah, you're thinking more longevity and also risk reward at that point right. too. If you can establish that strength focus in the beginning, like you can build so much more off of that versus the other way around. Totally. Next question is what are the best strength supplements? So barring, uh, you know, protein powders to help you hit those protein targets and let's say a, a nutrient that you may be deficient in. So besides those, because they'll make a big difference. You're not hitting a protein targets. You throw a protein shake in that makes you hit those targets. Steroids. Big deal. That's not a supplement. <laughs> no. Mexican supplement. I know. Um, <laughs> besides that, the, the, the one supplement that will raise your strength immediately is caffeine. Now, this is, a, this is study after study after study. If you perform a, a lift – and you've had a appropriate amount of caffeine for your body. And some people are too sensitive to do this, but most people, uh, you'll see a strength gain uh, immediately. It just it just works. Second, takes a little longer for it to work, but it's also quite consistent. It's creatine. Yeah, creatine will add 
in my experience for pretty much every client ever trained, after about one or two weeks, they all added about five pounds or two reps to pretty much every every lift. Yeah. Was that was like the number? Two reps was pretty standard. I, I just want to reiterate what you started with because in my experience, uh, people just skipped the essential thing and went goes right to like, oh, what are the performance ones? Yeah. The creatine or 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 the caffeine? You're not hitting your protein. Who cares? Well, and and not only that, but I, I don't think I've ever trained a client that wasn't deficient in iron, vitamin D, magnesium, some of these other essential things, essential micronutrients that your body needs, and. I just don't think we highlight this enough in strength and yeah. bodybuilding community that supplementing for what your body needs first, which by the way is way cheaper. So finding out, uh, taking, getting your blood work done, finding out where you potentially yeah. are lacking, and then supplementing for what your body needs. The, the, it's amazing how much more optimally your body will build muscle, burn body fat, and build strength when you get what your body needs first, then we can talk about, oh, creatine is awesome. Oh, caffeine could be awesome. Oh, like those other supplements. But I, I can't stress enough the importance of doing that first uh, before you even consider doing other supplements because that's a must. 100%. Yeah. All right, so here's what we did, right? So we have two workout programs that are ideal for building strength. Like if you want to get stronger, the two programs uh, that we have that are the best for that are MAPS, Power lift, which which focuses on the power lifts, right? Bench, deadlift, and squat, and then maps strong, which gets you stronger at the kinds of lifts that strongman competitors train in. So those two programs right there, if you were to get them together without what I'm about to say, without the discount, would be almost three hundred dollars. But right now, if you go to mindpumpmedia.com forward slash power dash bundle, you can get both of those together. Okay, for total. $79.99. So instead of 300 bucks, it's uh, under eight, right, right around $80. So $79.99, that's 73% off. Again, it's mindpumpmedia.com forward slash power dash bundle that gets you map strong and mass power lift. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right? Of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.